good morning and welcome back to Chit Chatter Day. I have missed chatting with you guys so much. I have a lot of things that I want to talk about today, a wide variety of things, but mostly I'm just excited to be able to sit down here today and have this opportunity to chat about all the things that I've been loving. I have missed this. Now that my kids are back in a physical building for school, I have this time again and it's it's so much fun. I took a really long time getting ready today, longer than usual, primarily because I haven't really done this in since July, really. I think that was, a no, maybe it was August favorites was the last time I curled my hair and put on some makeup. Um, I'm just not a person that does it if I'm not going anywhere. And especially now with the whole mask thing, the makeup comes off on the mask and it's just a mess. And so I just haven't been excited about it. But this morning I'm like, I'm excited. I get to pull myself together, chat with my friends about all the things that I've been loving. Um, I think I'm going to deem this my October favorites since we're at the end of October here. And I just basically have a bunch of things I've been using, um, some new things that I've purchased, some old things that are fabulous, and I just want to chat with you. So let's jump into this. So I think I'm going to start with some fall favorites, if you will. I picked up a couple of these mugs at Kirkland's, and I did share these in a fall like house haul, like home house haul, decor kind of thing. Not a lot of people watched that video. I don't know if that's just not an interest with my particular audience, but it's a super interest for me personally. So I've kind of started trickling in some decorating videos over the past little bit. Um, but that's not everybody's forte. But anyways, I shared these in that video. They're from Kirkland's. This one says, Autumn Leaves and Pumpkins, Please. I just like that they look like stone. I like a pottery kind of looking mug. And then this one says pumpkin spice everything. You know, I haven't filmed in a bit, so please excuse me if my lighting is not ideal. It's been a minute and you, you seriously forget, even though I've been doing this for many years, that doesn't mean I'm any better than the day that I started. So I wanted to share those with you because if you are into like a fall looking mug, they're super cute. This candle, this is my favorite Bath and Body Works uh, fall scent this year. Every year there's always one that kind of stands out to me that is new. So there's like the usuals that I like, but this one is called Acorn Lane. It is hands down my absolute favorite this year. <sighs> this, I can't get enough of this. I bought a ton of these in the wallflower, wallflower bulbs. I have, think I have at least two of these candles. Um, it's Autumn Leaves Warm Cinnamon Crisp Gala Apples. However, I feel like there's more depth to this. Like when I smell this, it's like the epitome of fall. It's so good. And this is a candle where it smells good when you smell it, but it also smells equally as amazing when you burn it. So a candle that some of the Bath & Body Works ones, um, I've had a few comments on my video that I did when I did this haul, saying that, hey, I couldn't smell it in the room. That is true. Some of their candles are really potent when you smell them, but then when you burn them, they, they lose their potency. It's like they don't permeate the room as well as others, and that's called the throw, and I've experienced that as well. Um, but I just want to tell you this one is amazing all around. Here's what it looks like. They might have it in a different wrap, but oh, it's so good. It is Just run out and get it. It is my absolute favorite scent. I darn near might have to go and buy 10 of them when they put them on sale uh, because I don't want to be without it. Fall is my favorite time of year. And today I'm pretending because next week we're supposed to get a cold front where we'll have like 60, 70 degree days. We're still in the 90s and today I'm wearing a dress um, out of necessity. I really wanted to put on a cozy sweater, but I, it, you just can't pretend when you're sacrificing sitting here sweating. We're just, we're not there yet. But in my experience living here, we start to cool down usually after Halloween. And so that's right around the corner. And hopefully after then, it's going to be sweater weather because I'm over. I'm very much over the heat. Um, so where was I going with that thought? To me, fall is the time of year where you just feel so cozy. And I just love adding coziness to my home through scents, fall scents, and lighting, and just like cute little fall decor, but also blankets. And I'm really big on draping blankets in like everywhere <laughs> in a basket over a chair uh over the ottoman like i just stuff blankets here there and everywhere you know like for practical reasons but also for like decorating and adding that cozy factor and i found a blanket actually two so i bought one loved it went back and bought it in another color it's from target the brand is threshold this is a super soft cozy 
affordable blanket. And you know, you can find these a lot of places. I've picked some up at Home Goods. In fact, I have another one in my living room that I love that I found at Home Goods. But I'm a sucker for like a knitted blanket. Um, a, um, three years ago, I bought a bunch of yarn and I was gonna make one myself, but three years later, it's still not made. Uh, so in the meantime, um, I bought this one in this really pretty gray color. I keep this in my guest bedroom. And then it also comes in cream. And I have a um, <laughs> chunky green cream sweater and blanket addiction. Whenever I see one that just catches my eye, I buy it. I know. But you know what? Blankets do get washed a lot and they do get kind of junky after a while. So to me, it's like, well, whatever. <laughs> I could justify it. But then there's this one in the cream color. And I just, I love it. This one's all full of cat hair and probably cookie crumbs and whatever else because we use it all the time on the couch. But you know what? It's the time of year where you just want to get those cozy blankets and I feel like, you know, stuffing them in a little basket and having it drape over the edge with a cute pillow and maybe a sprig of flowers. It's just a really easy way to cozy up your home and, but it's also practical. So let's talk about beauty and fashion and all things girly and fun. So a pair of shoes that I can't stop wearing. I bought these at the Nordstrom anniversary sale. I've worn them with jeans, with shorts. I'm about to wear them today with a dress these. These are the Lene Paolo uh, wedges. So they're a tennis shoe, but there's a wedge in here. They're comfortable. I've been wearing them a ton and have not gotten any blisters. These come in other styles and colors and there's a camo pair that's kind of cute. Um, but I just bought them in black because to me I would get the most use out of a black sneaker. Picking the kids up or walking them to school, running around at the grocery store doing errands. Don't get me wrong, I love a good heel. I think it it looks great and that might be the end like I get it right but from a practical standpoint when I have X amount of hours to go out and get all these things done I got to hit up all these places wearing heels is not going to be a good choice for me so that's why I love these because it incorporates a little bit of height but some fashion some style they look cute with like literally everything um, so I wanted to share these because I feel like these are a good bang for your buck I've gotten a ton of wear out of them already and I really feel like these are going to be something where I'm going to wear them out and then go and buy another pair immediately because I just love the the practicality married with a fashion like I just I just feel cool in them I feel like a cool mom <laughs> It makes me think of that song, that country song, I just want to be cool again, you know? Yeah. Speaking of something that is cozy, practical, comfortable, and I'm really kicking myself for not buying many more pairs, but trust me, I will next year. Um, at the Nordstrom sale, I bought these Chan... How do you say this? Chantel? C-H-A-N-T-E-L-L-E. -L -L -E, panties. Um, seamless. Black. Covers your tushy. Uh, I should have bought so many more pairs of these. These are fantastic. I even believe they're one size. I should have bought like 10 pairs of these. These serve such a purpose for me. They're black, they're comfortable, they're seamless, they're stretchy, there's no muss, there's no fuss, there's no scratchy lace. They've laundered well. Why did I not buy so many more pairs of these? I don't know. I would pay full price for these. I'm really contemplating it getting them on sale it's just like well it makes so much more sense but anyways highly recommend these these are just amazing all right so let's talk about makeup i was actually excited to, to put makeup on today i haven't done a full face of makeup in a while i was like you know what i'm gonna do lashes i'm gonna do the whole 10 yards so i bought a foundation i think i bought this in august or so I had been trying this out last fall. I had a sample, um, and right now, little backstory, um, I'm committing to like one foundation at a time because I don't wear it enough to justify having 15 of them. Um, they're expensive, they do go bad, and I just I just need one, right? So that's the road I've been on. I've been loving the NARS Sheer Glow, still love it. But I was looking for something that would be a little more lighter weight. Um, not that that's not, but just something with more glow, more skin-like, um, a little less coverage, believe it or not, that NARS Sheer Glow gives. The name suggests something that it's not. It is not a sheer foundation. It gives great coverage. So anyways, I picked up the Charlotte Tilbury Light Wonder Foundation. So I have shade 4 Fair, which I don't, I wouldn't consider myself fair. And the lighting's kind of bright right now, just so you can see me. Um, but I'm, I gotta still got some color in my skin from summer here. I'd say I'm a, I'm a good light right now. So 
this is beautiful this is the foundation i have on right now let me zoom you in a touch it is a lighter coverage i would say this is medium at best mostly light um uh, but i'm kind of at the game the stage of the game right now where i'm getting a little bit of wrinkling going on under here if I have too heavy, um, things start to settle throughout the day, and then that don't look good. So I'm really loving a lighter situation. And what I like about this is that it's versatile enough that you could mix it with something else to sheer it out a little bit or give it a little bit of a glow, because this is a, for me, um, still kind of a glowy, dewy finish. Keep in mind, we're still at you know 90 degrees out, so it's still very warm. I get sweaty and hot. Um, I'm not dealing with cooler temps yet. Now, once we take that swing, then this will, I'm really gonna sit well in this. Um, but right now I still get a little bit of oils, so I have to set all of this. But this is so pretty. I feel like this is, I'm not mature, like <laughs> mature age, right? But my skin is maturing. I don't have the same skin that I had 10 years ago. And so I feel like if you are in that more category of your skin is starting to mature, you're starting to get lines of life on your forehead or crow's feet or around your mouth and you're finding makeup is settling, try something lighter like this. I think this is a very beautiful foundation and it is SPF of 15, but I wouldn't rely on that. I'm just letting you know it does have a little bit of SPF in it. I sometimes feel like I'm so long-winded that I bore people to death. Okay, this bronzer, you know, I haven't bought a bronzer in years, years. I'm talking at least five years. And my friend Sherilyn gave this to me. She's like, I, have, I accidentally got two of these and will you use it? I'm like, yes. I've heard lots of good things about this. This is the Marc Jacobs um, Tantastic Omega Bronze. You guys, this is a really good bronzer. Like, I love the tone of this on my skin. It's, I zoomed you up, but let me zoom you back in. It is a very gorgeous, neutral, undertoned bronzer. It's not too yellow. I can't do something too yellow or too red. I basically just put it on my forehead. I do a little bit of bronzing on the sides of my face, but not so much anymore because as I've gotten older, my skin or my uh, bone structure has become more apparent. And so if I do too much contouring or bronzer, it makes me look not well like i want volume here i don't want to make this area smaller um but this is very very pretty it blends out well it's got a slight coconut scent but I, I don't go wild over scents and things um because i don't quite frankly care i want perfume to smell good um but i don't want necessarily a bunch of fragrance in the makeup because i do have a sensitive skin i've gone back to the bite lip mask i had been using the laneige one um, and it was down to the bottom of the barrel and I just was ready to try something different. I do this a lot. Like there's things that I repurchase that I really, really like. And then there's other things like this that I'm like, oh, let's try something else. Um, but I haven't purchased this since they put it in the pot or they reformulated it. I had the old original one, the mask. This one, I feel like it does, it's not as mask-like. Like it doesn't adhere to the lips as much. This feels more like the Laneige sleeping mask. And I really was hoping that it would be more of like the original formula where it was more sticky tacky, but that meant it really stayed on. And so I still like this though. What I wasn't loving about the Laneige was that kind of chemically icky taste that it would give in your mouth. Um, it reminded me of like L'Oreal lipsticks where you smell them, they're overly perfumed and you can just kind of like taste that. I don't know what it is, but it was off putting to me. This is nice. This is, uh, it comes in a tube or it comes in this pot. I just decided to get the pot because I don't, I don't use this outside of the house. So I'm not concerned about germs or anything like that. I use this in the house. Sometimes I will just wear this as my gloss. So it like moisturizes your lips, hydrates it. Um, I think they made this vegan. I don't know what that means, honestly. I, I mean, what was not, I don't know what that means. I'm not educated on that, but um, they changed the formula and I think it still is a good little lip therapy thing. So let's talk about hair. So I have been looking for a leave-in conditioner and I've been using this Living Proof Restore Perfecting Spray. Looks like this, it's just a leave-in conditioner. Um, I have incredibly hard water. Um, I do all the things you're supposed to be doing. I have hydrating shampoo, hydrating conditioner, I still have dry, look at that, the sun goes away and it instantly gets super dark in here. 
Um, so actually, now that the sun's gone away, you can see the true color of my skin. Anyway, um, and so I needed more moisture. And even after all that, I, I even have that ghost verb oil that I've been putting in my hair. Really like that stuff though. For if you have fine hair, um, I have fine textured hair and anything too oily will just make me look greasy. That stuff is fantastic. But this stuff is really great too. Um, I was researching a bunch of different leave-in conditioners and there's so many on the market. But I've never been let down by the Living Proof brand. I've purchased the Perfect Hair Day. I've tried their shampoos and their conditioners. I've always liked the things that I've tried. So I went back to a brand that I've been satisfied with, and this is great. So I wanted to share that with you. And then dry shampoos. Okay, so there's varying opinions on this, and I've, I asked in Instagram stories, like, what, what one is your favorite? And I have to say, I've tried this brand before, and I went back to it because I was very pleased with it. So this is the Dry Bar Detox Dry Shampoo, but they had two new scents, and I got the Vanilla Bourbon. Oh, you guys, this is nice. So here's my two cents on dry shampoo. The ones that are really inexpensive, I've tried, but they leave a serious white cast. And I'm already battling a bunch of gray hairs, actually they look white, coming up in this area, so we don't wanna highlight that, right? Um, and so I need something that's going to be not a heavy, thick, white cast dry shampoo. I don't need it overly perfumey. I would prefer it to actually be a lighter formulation so it's not like weighing everything down and just feeling disgusting. This is my favorite. I've used the original, I've used this one. I would highly recommend this one. And I've tried, I can safely say I've tried probably about 10 different dry shampoos. This one I think is the best. It's, it's easy, it is a little spendier. I can't remember how much this was, but honestly, I only wash my hair probably once maybe twice a week. I don't know what it is, but between my really hard water and aging, I've lost a lot of natural oils in my skin and in my hair. And so if I wash more than that, I have breakage, My I just it looks dehydrated, my hair is dull, and so I try just not to wash it too much. So in between, dry shampoo is what I use, and I don't even use that much. I found also uh, dry shampoo, less is more. So there's my two cents on that. I've been living in these. <laughs> these ones I just ordered, but at the Nordstrom anniversary sale, I bought three pairs of the Nordstrom lingerie pajamas. They're the best. They are the best. I'm a pajama connoisseur. I have so many pajamas. I've gone through so many pajamas. I live in pajamas. Um, I'm a stay-at-home mom, so I put clothes on to bring the kids to school and to pick them up, but then I come home and I put on my jammies because I like to be comfortable. I'm not a gal that lays around in the house in hoops and heels. It's just not me. I like to be cozy, and I've been binge-watching so many things on Netflix. Um, Schitt's Creek being one of them. Uh, the Unicorn, that's a really good show on Netflix. Um, we started watching The Boys on Amazon. Um, we're just watching TV, right? So I'm cozy. So these pajamas. I just got these ones. The, uh, I ordered them in leopard. They're not here yet. Um, I have them in navy. They come in black. Um, I have a striped pair. These Nordstrom lingerie brand jammies are great. So one thing I will tell you is at the Nordstrom sale, I bought a size small in these. The, so this one is a button-up top and then there's shorts. They also have pants and tops. They have long sleeve gowns, short sleeve gowns, a variety of styles. In this particular style, I had bought a small during the sale because I'd never bought them before, and I'm usually like a women's small. But I found that the bottoms, the, the waistband was pretty generous in size. It wasn't one of those really tight elastic bands. So because of its generosity, I sized down to an extra small in these and they fit just fine. So I'd say there's room, depending on how cozy you wanna be, you want a little more oversized, or do you want them a bit more fitted? So highly, highly recommend these. If you can get them on sale, you lucky duck. They fly off, off of Nordstrom when they go on sale. Cause I always add them to my Nordstrom wish list, which is another recommendation. I told you that during the sale, like put things you're looking at on your wish list because then when you check your wish list, it's already there and they also will notify you when it comes back in stock and you can see if it's on sale. So wanted to share those. Um, and the last things that I wanna share are some eyeshadow palettes. So I'm not certain if these are new or not. They showed up on my doorstep and I used this one and I used, actually there was four of them. And I'm just gonna share these two because these two kind of stood out to me. Um, for my skin tone. There's deeper tones for different skin tones. But this one is called the Nuance Quartet by Pixi. Looks like this. I'm going to zoom you in because I have the lighting turned up for 
you to see me, um, but it looks like this. I'm assuming, I didn't really read about this, but I'm assuming we're looking at blush, bronzer, and a couple highlighter situations. I have this on as highlighter today, and it is stunning. Uh, this is a matte blush. This is a matte, like, bronzer, maybe contour. I didn't really use this because this is not a tone I like on my skin, but this is so pretty over this blush, and that's what I have on today. And then this nine pan, is this... Where did it go? Let me grab the eyeshadow. Here's the other one. Is this the one I have on today? Oh, they're darker, I see, okay. So this one is the one I have on today. It's called Honey Nectar, looks like that. And then this one is called Sugar Blossom, and it's a little bit deeper. So this is more of a pinky peach, and this one's more of like a cool toned rose. Really gorgeous drugstore palettes if you're looking for like an all-in-one traveling situation um, these are gorgeous you could also use these shimmery shades as eyeshadow these are the eyeshadow palettes um, okay so one is called hazelnut haze this is not I didn't wear this today I wore this the other day and it was really pretty just your basic neutrals there are one well three four matte shades five matte shades four three shimmers and well, I guess I, I label shimmers, but I guess the correct word would be like metallic. And then there's like a matte with shimmer. But basically just a really pretty neutral everyday palette. This one's called Hazelnut Haze. And then this is the one I have on today called Rosette Ray. It looks like this. I like the very simplistic, pretty green packaging of this. So I was hoping that this color right here would come off a little bit more burgundy. And it does. I have on... Let's see, ooh, I have an eyelash flailing in the wind here. I have on these, these three colors, a little bit of this deeper color in my outer V, and then these two. And I did wet my brush to make my lid just a little bit more wet looking because I really like a super metallic wet looking lid. But I think both of these palettes are really pretty. So this particular one's called Rosette Ray. Let me hold and then Hazelnut Haze is this one. But really pretty, accessible, everyday palettes. I wanna share one more thing. <laughs> the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize in Champagne. This is so pretty. If you're looking for like a really simple, everyday cream eyeshadow that blends out beautifully, this is, this is gorgeous. I love a very, it's kind of whippy too. It's not a thick, it's super thin. So if you're concerned about this um, emphasizing crepes, like crepiness on your eyelids, which I have a little bit of, it blends out really well and it doesn't emphasize that. It's not super, like, it's metallic but without texture. Does that make sense? It's so pretty and easy and just everyday to me. Like you just want your eyes to look wide awake and bright, especially with wearing a mask. Just like a simple all over champagne color on the eyes I think is a really stunning look. That's everything that I have to share with you guys today. I have so enjoyed chatting with you. I hope you did too. Let me know some of your favorites down below in the comments and also let me know what you would like to see from me going forward here. Um, I have more favorite-y type things to share but if you have something else in mind, if you just want a couple little chit chat get ready with me, we can do that too. So I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Please subscribe, like this video, love to have you here. Helps my channel grow and I appreciate you and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye guys.